Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for listening in to this uh, message from uh, myself on behalf of Vocation and the Vocation Directors. Um, I just want to start this message by saying that um, we, we feel your frustration. Um, I was originally going to type this out as a statement that was going to be put out on our Twitter and I've suddenly realised that there's so much I need to cover in this that I need to do this as a video. Um, this is the only way I'm going to be able to get all of this information conveyed across to everyone in as transparent a manner as we can possibly do. Um, so let me just start. Um, Vacation this year has sold out for the first time in our history. In five years of running, we've now hit unprecedented demand for our event and our hands have been somewhat tied in what we can and can't do to resolve this. Um, we will be honest, we've been on the back foot with this this year. Um, since our event happened in 2019, we've had two changes of the guard in our technology team and this has meant that the registration system we had back in 2019 was made unavailable to us. Um, we then, of course, had the pandemic, which I know that people would say, you've had two years, you could have sorted this out during that. Um, the truth is that the current IT team have only been in position since May this year, and they have developed our new registration system entirely from scratch in under four months. Please bear in mind, they are entirely volunteers with full-time jobs. I think this has to be acknowledged that it's nothing short of a Herculean effort from them to get us to this position. Um, our original plans when we were setting this up was that we wanted to open pre-reg back in June and have our sales open by July. That was in our original project plan, but as with any volunteer event, when you get big staff turnover, we've had to mitigate this as best we can. Now, I know there's a lot of people on Twitter, Telegram, etc. at the moment saying, we you know, Vacation could have dealt with this, we could have had the resources. The answer is, we simply can't. Um, we've, we've been facing a shortage of volunteers wishing to come forward and help us. Um, as you've probably seen from our multiple recruitment drives, we've got the recruitment page, the website. It's simply that we haven't had the applications, we haven't had the staff coming forward saying that they want to actually come and help us. Um, it's easy for people sat at home to say that we should have thrown more staff or resources at the reg system. Um, we have tried. And I just want to make it clear that at this point, our IT team numbers just six people. So again, I want that to bring forth how hard they've worked to even get us a registration system working at this point. Now, it's a new registration system. There will be teething issues, and we understand that. But, you know, we're taking on all the feedback that we're getting from it. We will be working to make this better going forward because it needs to be. And we understand that. But time has been of the essence. Um, if we'd have tried to fix all of the registration bugs and everything that was in the system, we wouldn't have been opening until weeks before the event, which is no good for anybody, especially when everyone's trying to plan uh, how to get to the event, etc. Um, with that out of the way, I also need to give you all some numbers to understand the gravity of the issue here. So, vacations attendance by year. In 2016, we had 92 attendees. 2017, 217. 2018, 341. 2019, 597. This year, in pre-registration alone, we had 1,156 people sign up. Number of room share groups set up, 309 groups. And the reality of it is that on site, we only have 153 units at John Fowler's site. Now, with all of those at max capacity, that will accommodate somewhere between six and 700 people if they're all at maximum capacity. Now, I know it's easy to call out that we need to get a bigger site. We know that. We're, we honestly, we're not sat here saying, oh, we're just gonna keep on running at John Fowler's because this is funny. It's not. We know we need to get bigger. But people need to understand that getting a bigger venue is not an easy thing. Um, it's been easy for us with John Fowler's because we've moved from their different sites up to their flagship site. But we are at a point now with their flagship site where we are now too large for the John Fowler Sandy Glade site. Now, I am already in the process of trying to find new venues. Um, this is not an easy process. We've got to build new relationships. We've got to explain what the event is going to do, what numbers we're going to be bringing. We need to make sure that whatever site we move to, it's got the right sizing to ensure that we can accommodate as many people as possible. Um, but you know, we have had un unprecedented demand for our event this year and it humbles us, honestly, it humbles us that there's so much interest in people wanting to come along to vacation. Um, 
We honestly, this year, didn't see or anticipate much growth. We thought between concerns over COVID, um, we thought with the cost of living crisis, we didn't expect to suddenly be in a position where we're now having record numbers of people attending to uh, registering to try and attend vacation this year. So, as I say, we'll be transparent, apparent, we'll be open, we'll be honest. Um, we, we we've been caught with our pants down, quite honestly. Um, but we are working to try and resolve this. Um, as I say, there are discussions ongoing for us to move on to larger venues. Um, this, unfortunately, is a slow process. It's not likely that this will even happen ahead of 2023. So it's likely we will still be at John Fowler's next year and we're going to have to do something for next year just to try and make this whole process as fair as possible for you, the attendees. Um, so, you know, all I would ask is please bear with us. We are working and doing the absolute best that we can. We've got a staff team of 90 people to run this event uh, across all of the different teams with infocation from welfare to uh, the registration team to the technology team, the events team, directors. You know, we, we've got, it's quite in terms of all other conventions, we've got quite a small staff rotor on, on going at the present time. Um, there's a couple of rumours that I want to address and there are a couple of things that we do need to be open and honest with you, the attendees, about. So first and foremost is the um, the news that has gone round in regard to staff getting first pick of the accommodation. Now, one of the things that I've seen banded around is that staff are getting the biggest units they can for just themselves. That is absolutely false. What I will say is that the staff have to follow the same rules that we have for all the other attendees, which is that if there is um, a larger unit, we need to make sure that we're getting the maximum capacities out that we can out of that. So, for example, the four bedroom units were only available to groups of six or larger just so that we can ensure that we can maximise the, the attendance on site. But the other thing that we need to balance this with is we need to balance this against um, safety regulations um, and how many people we can physically fit on the site safely without jeopardising health and safety for all the attendees. We don't want to be seen as the convention that's just out there trying to squeeze everyone onto the site as we can to grab as much money as possible. That's not our way. Um, our primary foremost concern is the health and safety of our attendees, which does limit the numbers that we can have on site. Um, the next thing I want to call out in terms of the staff, yes, staff do get the early registration, but there's a big reason for that. Without the staff, if there's no staff that can attend the event, how can the event run? We can't put an event together for you if there are no staff to actually run it on the site. Now, we can't even take people off the site. Uh, there is insurance requirements in place and fire safety requirements in place that mean that if you're not actually staying on the John Fowler's Sandy Glade Holiday Park and the Overflow um, Lodge Park, um, we cannot accommodate you on site. The reason for this, it's down to John Fowler's insurance requirements. Um, their insurance states that uh, everyone on site can only be resident at the site. So if, uh, if you're looking at trying to book a hotel off site or looking at trying to get caravans in parks elsewhere, you unfortunately still will not be able to attend vacation. We cannot offer day tickets. And in terms of the actual attendance at the event, um, you know, we can plan for a capacity of six to seven hundred people, but if we end up with more than that on site, we will end up having to shut the event down because health and safety is going to force us to do so. We cannot have large num larger numbers of people on site than we're licensed for and John Fowler's are licensed for because if anything goes wrong, we're the ones that get it in the neck. We're the ones that will end up facing the potential prison sentences for neg ne negligence and uh, manslaughter, those sort of things, if we've ignored safety protocols to make sure the event runs with as many people as possible. So the other thing just to touch on in terms of staff, the staff uh, that have pre-registered, um, a lot of them are sharing with other staff. Um, so myself, I'll be open and transparent. I'm sharing with four well, there's four people in my room share including myself the other three are staff members and i'm in a two-bedroom value chalet the reason being i'm going to spend little to no time in my chalet there's no point me being in a top-end chalet uh, and paying the money when i'm probably only going to spend eight hours a day in there sleeping and the rest of the time i'm out on the comm floor 
Um, in other staff situations, I know that a lot of the staff are sharing with other staff and where there are gaps where there aren't staff members to fill, um, they have invited their friends and I have it on good authority that all of the units that have gone to our staff are at maximum capacity shared both between staff and attendees. There is nobody in our staff position that has a unit just to themselves because I wouldn't allow it. It's not in vocation's way, it's not in our interests and it's not in our attendee interests. So um, hopefully that's a couple of rumours put to bed. I just wanted to actually like address these and like I say, you know, I could have put this in a long-winded statement for everyone to read but that wasn't going to work. Now we are looking for a bigger venue. We have got a few negotiations ongoing. Um, as I say, this is going to take some time. Um, all I would ask is that you please be patient with us, please be understanding. Um, we are all volunteers at the end of the day. We are trying our absolute best to ensure that we can make the best event for the attendees that we can. Um, we will be looking at, as I say, moving on to a bigger venue. That's likely to be 2024. Um, 2023, uh, we are possibly, you know, <laughs> Lots of people are suggesting the lottery system. Now, that was done for Confuzzled earlier this year. There was mixed reactions to whether that was fair or not. Um, I've got my own ideas on what, if we have to implement a lottery for next year, I've got my own ideas on how we want to do this. This includes doing it in the same way we've done the four-bed Platinum Lodge. So we would do it as a live draw with a random number generator so everyone can see that we're being as transparent as possible, making this, the process as fair as possible. Um, there was something else that was on the tip of my tongue it's just gone it was in regard to the staff units oh that was it yeah so the, the other question that's come up is about staff taking all of the platinum lodges and all the top units for themselves um, that simply isn't true um, with vacation we've always had it that staff can get the pick of the accommodation um, what we are going to implement for next year within our staff though um, in response to the questions that we have asked we have asked and I'm again being open and honest with the people on this um, we will be making it that if there are for example seven four bedroom platinum lodges available on the park only three of those will become available to the staff the remaining four will become available to attendees um, this is things that we're going to do to ensure that we're doing the best we are, we're acting in the best interest of the attendees we're acting in the best interest of the event and we just want to be open and transparent you know um, all the feedback we've received we will be taking on board we've got lots of bug fixes from the website that's already come through for the registration system where groups were disappearing um, but at reappearing on an F5 that sort of thing these are issues that we are, were aware of but simply didn't have the time to fix at this point um, so yeah we are working on it We've now got a basis, we've got a, a foundation to work from for next year in terms of the registration system. So the tech, tech team's job for next year is going to be fixing those bugs and then we're going to be looking at implementing everything to make sure that we, we get as fair a process for these accommodation units as possible for next year for all of you attendees. Um, so, yeah. Um, I guess I want to end this on a high uh, at this point. I just want to say, you know, we're absolutely blown away with the level of interest shown for vacation this year. Um, we're really thankful for all the attendees that really want to come along. Um, we understand the upset. We understand the frustration. Um, we will do our best to try and get this resolved as we move forward. But all I would just like to ask at this moment is just please be kind. Um, show the attend uh, our staff um, some respect and, you know, we're all putting in our time at the end of the day for you, the attendees. Um, what we don't need is staff being uh, receiving abusive messages, etc., um, just because things haven't gone to plan for us this year. We we know things haven't gone to plan. We will work to fix this. But um, yeah, you know, it's it, it's humbling. Um, I, I'm rambling a bit, but that's just because I'm in a bit of a state of shock myself as to how quickly everything sold out this evening. Nine minutes. That that was literally it. nine minutes. All units sold on on the site. Um, so yeah, that's why you know I, I need to get this message out to everyone. I need I need you all to understand this. I, I we understand your anger. We understand the frustration, and we are listening. We will fix this going forward. Just please bear with us, 
um, and we will do our best. Thank you.